Hello there, Playtendo Guy here, and welcome to my review of Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Despite still being immensely popular and sales still strong, Call of Duty has felt a bit iffy in recent years. Last year's Advanced Warfare offered a strong experience, but the previous entry Ghost still leaves a bit of taste in many players' mouths. After three years absent, Treyarch is back with one of the best value and content packed games in recent memory. Last year's Advanced Warfare introduced a more advanced movement system with its exosuits and Black Ops 3 builds upon it by adding boosts when you slide and free running up walls as well as keeping the awesome jump pack from Advanced Warfare. Water no longer kills you, your player can now swim and shoot underwater and you can perform all these movements very easily and free running up a wall and killing someone at the same time never gets old. Now time to talk about the modes the game offers. First up is the campaign, probably the most overlooked part of any COD game as most hardened players go straight into multiplayer, and it is a shame as some titles like Black Ops 2 and Advanced Warfare offered really decent campaigns. But this time the campaign is a bit different, the whole campaign can be played in 4 player online and offline co-op, which is a real big deal and it shows in the gameplay as the levels no longer feel like overlong corridors, but more open for exploration and way more enemies on the screen. Another thing new to the campaign is Cyber Calls, which are abilities that can be performed to gain advantage over the enemy. You gain these abilities by levelling up in the game, and these abilities include detonating enemy grenades, to command in a swarm of fireflies to distract your enemies whilst you go in for the kill. Cyber Calls are a great idea that do add a little bit of variety to the normal run and gun gameplay. Plot wise the game is an absolute mess, the story revolves around your user generated character and their teammates fighting a deadly terrorist group called the CDP. It's typical COD fare but with so many unnecessary cutscenes that ruin the pace of the game you end up skipping most of them. But while the plot may be a load of old cobblers the campaign still offers some fun moments and is well worth a try with others. Next up is Zombies. The ever popular side mode is back with its best and most complex iteration to date. Shadows of Evil offers a great 1930s style New York map and also has a great voice cast including Jeff Goldblum and Ron Perman. Zombies, like the campaign and multiplayer, now has its own leveling up system. When you level up in Zombies you earn Gobblegum and you can select up to 5 of these to use in a match and you are randomly given one when paying 500 points into the Gobblegum machine. You can also create more powerful Gobblegums by using Liquid Divinium that you find in the game. Shadows of Evil is certainly a fair bit different and more complex to the older zombie maps with more focuses on rituals and finding easter eggs. Those hungry for more zombies will also be pleased to hear that there's another zombie mode called Nightmares which swaps the game's campaign story set in enemies and swaps it for a zombie apocalypse theme. Now time for the big mode, multiplayer. This year the game launches with 12 maps and each and every one of them uses the new traversal system very well. Instead of making a random soldier for multiplayer like old, uh, this time you can choose from a various operators, and while they're all generally move and control the same, each operator has their own specific special powers. Some of these powers include an explosive bow and arrow, a machine gun arm, to even a fire gun, and much, much more. Returning from Black Ops 2 is the Pick 10 system, which is where you literally pick 10 weapons, attachment, and perks for your loadout. It's a simple system, but works incredibly well. Black Ops Multiplayer also includes a wealth of different types of modes. You have your standard free for all, team deathmatch, and capture the flag. Also, returning from last year's Advanced Warfare is Uplink, and also my personal favourite, Domination. There is also a new mode called Safeguard, where one team has to defend and escort a robot. What the what? There is also a new mode called Safeguard, where one team has to defend and escort a robot while the other team tries to disable it. You can't shoot the robot as it can't be destroyed. It's a new mode that's worth trying out. Overall, what else is there to say about the multiplayer? It's the same brilliant multiplayer with some great new modes and some great refinements to make this version of multiplayer the best yet. Now time to wrap things up with a conclusion. Black Ops 3 marks the biggest and content packed game in the series to date, with something for everyone to get stuck into and you'll certainly get your money's worth here. Whilst the campaign's plot is absolutely balmy and unforgettable, it is worth a try thanks to the 4 player co-op. The multiplayer and zombies are the strongest they've ever been, but the campaign has to be the weakest so far. I would give Black Ops 3 a score of 8.5 out of 10 with a title of great. Thank you for watching my review, I hoped you enjoyed it, bye!